Thank you very much once more. Welcome, brethren, uh, all the members of our parish, both St. Christopher and uh, St. Luke's. Uh, this is our blessed new day. Today is uh, Tuesday, the 30th of uh, June 2020. Welcome to our devotions. We'll continue with the thought that we had yesterday and we have been discussing about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. We thank you, dear Father in heaven, for having given us this blessed new day. We acknowledge you, our God. You are the only living God and there's no other. You are the one who creates a new day, removing darkness of the night and giving us the light of the sun and we receive a new day. We take this day with thanksgiving in your presence and we pray that you may lead us by your Holy Spirit so that in the paths of life that we go today, we may praise you by our walk and in all our activities and in all our relationships. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So friends, once more today, I'm go we are going to concentrate now specifically on the manner of baptism of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and uh, starting once more with this famous scripture, the book of Acts chapter 1, chapter 2, verses 1 to 3, we see disciples being baptized with the Holy Spirit, and this is how it happened. Uh, if you read in chapter 2, chapter 2, verses 1, continuing, I'll read a few verses. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit enabled them. Friends, what points can we note from this scripture? I note that many, many speakers would, would only take one point that they all spoke in tongues. Today, let me give you some more key observations. That when this event happened, the place where they were, the whole room, the Bible says that there was shaking of the house. The house was just shaken. The Holy Spirit came with a lot of power. Secondly, we are told that there was violent weed that was blowing. Uh, in the loom, uh, it is not common to, to have weed in the loom. Weed can be outside there. But this time it was in the loom and it was blowing all over. And we are told that it was actually very strong. It was very viol it was violent. Number three, we are told that there were seen visible tongues of fire. And please note the word seen, not just hearing. They were seen. There were tongues of fire that were seen with the physical eyes, and these tongues of fire were seen lasting on the hand of every believer. Number four, uh, there was a lot of ecstasy. There was a lot of there was a lot of enthusiasm. The speaking brought a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of ecstasy amongst believers. Therefore, brethren. From this event, one could almost say that speaking in tongues is the main sign of the Holy Spirit baptism. But we have now seen that there are other, other, other signs that accompany the coming of the Holy Spirit. And many people have taken speaking in tongues today as the only, almost the only sign of uh, being baptized with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, it should be seen what we have said that there were actually other signs that accompanied the speaking of tongues. And I would like to, to say this. <clears throat> it should be noted that there are actually other cases. There are other cases in the New Testament, especially the book of tongues, the, the book of Acts, sorry, the book, of, the book of Acts, where those who received the Holy Spirit did not actually speak in tongues. We have, we have seen five passages in the, in the book of Acts that consistently demonstrate 
that those who receive, who are baptized with the Holy Spirit, they speak in tongues. Now, I want to show you some more scriptures in the same book of Acts that actually demonstrate that not all who are baptized with the Holy Spirit actually will speak in tongues. Point number one, for example, in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 14 to 18, the Samaritan Christians, we are told, they all received the Holy Spirit upon the laying of hands by Peter and John. They all received the Holy Spirit. But if you read carefully in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 14 to 18, you will notice that we are not told that they spoke in tongues. We are not told that they spoke in tongues. We are only told that they received and were baptized with the Holy Spirit. But we are not told that they, speak, they spoke in tongues. Consider also, consider also the book of Acts chapter 4 verses 31, and I would like to read that one with you. The book of Acts chapter 4 and verses 31. Yeah, we are told after they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. This is a case in which brethren are praying together and in a place where they are meeting and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and we are told that the the, the, the house, the, the room in which they were, was, it was actually shaken. This was another experience almost similar to chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. The only difference here is that we are told that here they spoke the word of God boldly. But we are not told that they actually spoke in tongues. Look again, look again. If you read the story in the still in the book of Acts, still in the book of Acts, chapter, uh, if you read the in the book of Acts about the story of a man of God called Stephen. Stephen, we are given the story of Stephen still in the book of Acts. And we are told that Stephen was a man who was full of wisdom, and we are told that he was also filled with the Holy Spirit. He was a great preacher. But if you read the whole story of St. Stephen, we are not told anywhere that he spoke in tongues. We are not told anywhere that he ever spoke in tongues. And finally, let me also give you another example uh, concerning our brother Paul in the book of uh, Acts chapter 9, verses 17. This is where the man of God, uh, Ananias, came to pray for our brother St. Paul when he believed in chapter 9 and verses 17. So we are told, then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Pressing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the Lord as you came here, has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul, Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized. After taking some food, he regained his strength. Friends, you can see, Ananias tells our brother Paul, I've come so that you can be your eyes can be opened so that you can receive the, uh, the Holy Spirit because God has a special calling for you. And when he prayed for him, we are told that uh, uh, something like scales fell from his eyes and you know he had become bright. He could see again. And we are not told that Paul, at the point of uh, being laid in the hands of Anania, that uh, that at that point 
we are not told that he ever spoke in tongues. But we are told that he received the Holy Spirit. So what can we learn from all these scriptures, brethren? What can we learn from these scriptures? I have I've given you scriptures from both sides of the divide. I've given you scriptures in the book of Acts that state clearly that all who believe will be filled with the Holy Spirit and they will speak in tongues. I've given you other scriptures on the, on the other side from the same book of Acts that demonstrate that those who are filled with the Spirit and were baptized did not actually speak in tongues. So what can we say? There is no point of uh, the Church of Christ being divided and people fighting from one side to the other. What we should understand is that the Spirit of God is not limited by human formulations. He acts freely. The Bible says the wind blows everywhere and you never know where it goes or where it comes from. You cannot dictate at which point somebody will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Some will be baptized even some will be baptized with the Holy Spirit even before they are baptized with water. They will be baptized at the point of belief. Others will be baptized with water and they will have not have received the Spirit. They will have to wait again for another experience. And when they are laid hands on, they receive the Spirit. Others receive the Spirit simultaneously. So, and we are told that others speak in tongues when they receive the Holy Spirit. Others do not speak in tongues. What we should know as Christians is that at some point, a believer will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And when we are baptized with the Holy Spirit, we will get different man manifestations. And these manifestations, they are called gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you will not receive all. Neither should we dictate to the Spirit which, which gift he will give us. At least we shall receive a gift and we will have been baptized with the Holy Spirit. This must give us the understanding that all of us, those who speak in tongues, those who have been given other gifts, and those who demonstrate other manifestations, all of us are, have been baptized with the same Spirit, we have been given the same Spirit to drink, and we have been incorporated into the body of Christ so that we can live together, worship together, and serve God together. This is the position of the New Testament. This is the key position in the book of Acts, that we are all baptized with the Holy Spirit. Some will speak in tongues, others will not speak in tongues, but that does not mean that they will not be given other gifts. At the same time, that does not mean that nobody will speak in tongues. Praise the Lord. Have a blessed day today as you desire to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and to have manifestations of the Holy Spirit in your life. We thank you, dear Father in heaven, for the lesson of today. Glad that, Lord, as we go out in the paths of life, we shall be experiencing the baptism of the Holy Spirit times and times again in our lives and be given power and audacity to serve you amongst the people. We pray this in Jesus' name.